Hi, I'm Rick Sempos, executive editor of Automobile Magazine. I test cars for a living. I do it every day. Hey, it's not a bad job. But you don't have to be an expert to conduct a proper test drive evaluation. Please don't tell my boss. And in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how to do it just like we do it at Automobile Magazine. Test driving a car is easy. This is not rocket science, folks. You just have to drive the way you normally do. But you have to pay attention to the machine. I've seen people driving along, shaving, putting on makeup, reading, singing, seat dancing, and yelling into the phone. Oh, the phone. Uh-uh. That won't work. All you have to do is use your eyes, your ears, and the seat of your pants, and you'll know what that car is saying to you. At Automobile Magazine, we tell everyone the same thing. Buy a car you love. Hey, you got to live with that baby for two, three, four years, right? Right. First off, you want to love the way it looks. Does the styling turn you on and make you want to drive it? Check out the details. Are the headlamps, side mirrors, door handles, and air dams smoothly integrated? And how about the body seams? Do they line up evenly? A well-fitted body is the sign of a well-made car. Likewise, a properly designed door ought to open and close easily. And it should close with a solid sound. Yes. Are the door handles easy to use? The door should offer plenty of clearance for the legs. Hey, good design not only makes a car pretty, it makes it user-friendly, too. Some of the biggest technological advancements to come about lately have been in the area of safety. Well, every car company says their cars are safe. So how do you test safety? Well, you don't. Because if you hit something so hard that the airbag goes off, you may have just bought yourself a car. But you can ask questions, and you can check it out with your own eyes. Airbags. Almost every car's got one of these safety devices for the driver. But does the car you're looking at have two protecting the front passenger as well as the driver? This is where I tell you that airbags are definitely more effective when you wear your seatbelt, so always wear it. We don't want anything happening to your head, right? OK, more safety stuff. Side guard door beams. You can't see them because they're in here. They help minimize penetration into the passenger compartment during a side collision. Another safety device that parents of young kids just love, and I'm speaking from experience here, are built-in child rear safety seats, like this one. Great for securing the little ones. Only a few cars have these. They're a real plus. Another form of protection developed for today's cars is the theft alarm system. Unwanted tampering will trigger a warning to everyone around and, depending on the car, might even prevent engine startup temporarily. This one's not going anywhere. Fire it up just yet. We have more to talk about before we drive. In here, we're talking ergonomics, the science of making the car's interior and controls work for you instead of against you. You know, you need to be in control when you drive, and the cabin environment should feel orderly and natural. You shouldn't even have to think about using the major switches and controls. Time to take stock. For instance, can you see the instruments at a glance? Are the gauges large enough with legible numbers? An adjustable steering wheel makes getting into a comfortable position easier. You'd think that putting the controls and switches with an easy reach would be a no-brainer. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Now, what are your fingertips telling you about this? In some cars, the controls are backlit, and the switches have unique shapes so you can identify them without looking. Very helpful, especially at night. Other cars aren't so good. Some stink. When you test driving, work the climate control switches and audio system buttons. The shifter should fall readily to hand, whether it's an automatic or a manual. If you think you're going to crash every time you adjust something, that's a bad sign. Notice how easy it is to see out. The better your visibility, the safer you are. Lots of glass area helps. Here's a big one with us automobile editors, and it should be a big thing for you, too. I'm talking about seats. A bad seat can make you hate a good car. A seat needs to be supportive, firm, 
But not hard like a bleacher seat at Wrigley Field. The more adjustments, the better. Front to back, elevation, lumbar control, seat back recliner. They help reduce fatigue on long trips and make you feel part of the car. And we enthusiastic drivers love that feeling. I think an adjustable seatbelt anchor is a plus. It allows drivers and passengers of all sizes to keep the belt in a comfortable position across the chest and off the neck. Do the cars you're looking at have this feature? Okay, so you decided you need a car as big inside as the Kingdom. Let me guess, you're not 19 and you got a couple of kids at home. Newsflash, all sedans are not created equal. Though two cars might measure about the same on the outside, they won't necessarily give you the same room on the inside. Some cars are simply engineered more space efficiently than others. Hey, forget the EPA's interior ratings or anybody's numbers. Here's a quick way to check roominess for yourself. First, set the front seat the way you normally like it, then scoot around under the back. Do this with all the cars you're checking out and you'll know which one offers the most usable rear seat room. Of course, if you're buying a sporty coupe, then carrying 16 people and three dogs probably isn't your top priority. But you still want to have flexibility to carry either your friends or the gear you need to have fun. A split-folding rear seat is a good thing. In a sedan, look for a deep trunk, but most important, a wide opening with a very low lift over height to make loading and unloading your overstuffed suitcase easier. Now, before we finally hit the road, let me mention two last items to keep in mind as you drive. First, the climate control system. You want a powerful one with strategically placed vents and a fan that blows like Hurricane Andrew so that it can cool the cabin down or heat it up quickly and deliver the warm or cold air to all passengers, even those in the back seat. With the most sophisticated systems, you get automatic temperature control that allows you to set it and forget it. That's good. Heated mirrors that clear themselves of frost and ice on cold days? Very cool. And there are other innovations to keep on the lookout for, like solar control glass that dissipates heat as the airflow passes over the glass. You want to keep in mind whether all of these features are standard, optional, or not available. And I'm sure you will. Second is the all-important sound system. These days, car systems rival home systems for power and clarity. Do not evaluate a sound system when parked, unless you plan to never drive your car with the audio system on. You want to listen to it with the backdrop of road noise. And you want to be aware how easy the system's controls are to reach and operate. Also, and probably most important, how does it make you sound when you're alone singing back up? Oh, yeah. Now for the moment you've been waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. In fact, what does the engine sound like? Does it sound rich and smooth? Or sound like a dentist drill? As you drive, make a mental note. We're off. It's time for the seat of the pants stuff. Obviously, all cars don't handle the same or feel the same. Sports coupes are more agile than sedans, but all cars should steer crisply and should feel like they really react naturally to your steering inputs. Does the steering feel sharp, or does it feel loose and mushy? You'd be amazed at the differences between cars in the same class. Some cars have speed-sensitive variable assist steering. At highway speeds, the effort it takes to turn the wheel is increased, which gives you a greater feeling of stability. But when you're parking, the effort level goes down, and the wheel is very easy to turn. Just what you want. Okay, let's see how it handles. Notice how stable and sure-footed the car is while cornering on the road. How much it leans or doesn't. Notice whether bumps toss it around like a motorboat in a rough sea, or if it seems to take bad roads in stride. Does the body feel tight and solid, or does it rattle and shiver? All of that is a result of a complicated combination of factors, starting with body rigidity and ending up with how the engineers tune the suspension. As with every other aspect of automobiles, no two cars are the same. Drive a few and compare. You'll know real quick whose engineers figured out the secret code. The same thing goes for a car's ride. Drive and compare. 
the better sports coupes have a surprisingly supple ride. Conversely, you'd be amazed at the handling capability of a well-developed sedan. On to everybody's favorite, acceleration. This one's easy, right? Now wait a minute. Try accelerating three different ways. From a stop, from moderate speed, and on a highway. Squeeze the throttle down smoothly and firmly. Don't stomp on it. Now, how's it feel? Does the car have the power to allow you to merge, pass, or pull away from trouble? Now, word about turbocharging. If you're driving a car with a turbocharger, remember, the extra power isn't going to be apparent at low revs. You've really got to let the thing rev up to about 2,500 RPM and beyond before you feel the extra boost and feel the turbo kick in. Ooh boy, now that's what I call acceleration. Accelerating's fun, but stopping, that's serious business. Again, the expert way is a smooth, firm application of pressure to the pedal. As you slow down, the car's path should remain straight and true. Cars with ABS give you the advantage of greater steering control during hard braking. Do not try this on a test drive, or you're going to scare the poor salesman to death. If you ever do brake hard enough to make the anti-locking mechanism kick in, you'll feel it as a shuddering in the brake pedal. Don't worry, keep braking. What you feel is the system keeping the tires from locking up. It allows you to maintain control. Terrific. So, that's how to evaluate a car like those of us who do it every day. Not so hard, huh? Quality of assembly, safety features, styling, roominess, comfort, convenience, performance, ride, handling, and braking. Now you don't have to depend on anyone else for your information. Not, I'm very sorry to say, even me using your eyes, your ears, and the seat of your pants. Ultimately, you have to ask yourself, does this car make me and my passengers feel confident, well cared for, and comfortable? And how does it compare to the other cars I'm interested in? Now you know how to find the answers.